Welcome to a brief overview of how to adapt to open educational resources. Now that you have learned what open educational resources are and what benefits they provide, this video will show you how to start the process of tailoring an OER to your course. This recording will cover what OER are, what to think about before you adapt OER, platforms and tools for adapting OER, where to share an adapted OER, and how to keep OER current through assessment and gathering feedback. So first a refresher, what are OER? Open Educational Resources, or OER, are high quality teaching, learning, and research materials that are free for people everywhere to use and repurpose. They are high quality because they are created by subject experts and very often peer reviewed, just like commercial textbooks. They're free in terms of cost and free from copyright restrictions and that means that they can be used and repurposed with no or very few limitations, which is what we are talking about in our presentation today. Adapting an OER can mean a bunch of different things. Adding or taking out information or materials, combining two or more OER into one package, creating or adding ancillaries or interactive materials, editing the material that is already available, and many more options. Once you've decided to begin to adapt an OER, you need to make sure you're actually allowed to do so. This means you will need to check the Creative Commons licenses applied to the material. The big red flag you're looking for is the no derivatives license. If you see that equal sign in a circle, you cannot go any further. However, if you don't see that and you are working for an educational institution like Toro and won't be profiting from this material, you're in the clear. You'll of course want to attribute the OER you are modifying to its authors and or institution. And if you see the share alike license, you'll want to apply the same license as the original work when you are finished. It's also important to think about why you want to adapt an OER. Some great reasons for adapting an OER are that you cannot find exactly what you're looking for out there, that you have found a pretty good OER, but it needs to be made current or has egregious typographical or grammatical errors, or you need to make a book align with a significantly shorter or longer semester. And then there are some not so good reasons for adapting an OER, mostly because they are so much more work than they are worth. These reasons might be that there are some minor typos, which there are in many commercial textbooks too, or that you want your name on something published because a promotion review is coming up. However, if you feel your adaptation would be significant and meaningful, forge ahead. Now that you've determined that you can adapt an OER and have a good reason for doing so, you'll need to plan your approach. Whether you have a limited or large budget does not dictate whether you will be able to complete an OER adaptation project, only how much time you will need to work on it. With more money, you can often pay for a more robust platform with support services provided or available at an additional fee. With this outsourcing of the work, you can save a lot of time. On the flip side, if you don't have much or any money to devote to the project, you will likely need to scope out free tools and do the work yourself. This can lead to imperfect results, but you can refresh and refine the book each semester you use it, so it will take longer to get right, but at a much lower cost. And if you don't have much money and you don't have much time, you can use the book as it is and supplement it with additional materials, or you can look for internal or external grant or funding opportunities. Your technical skill level is also important to assess honestly to determine what kind of project you can undertake and what kind of tools you can and should use. If you have little to no technical skill, it might be worth it to partner with a colleague who is more comfortable with technical projects or to find funding or in-kind support. If you have a higher technical skill level, you can likely bootstrap a cheap solution. Libraries are happy to consult on this in all areas of OER, so please reach out if you have any questions. In this part of the presentation, I will provide a quick look at the platforms that you can use to add an OER, and then some of the platforms you can use to share that adapted OER, just so you know what's out there and can start to think about what's possible. If any of these tools interest you, I invite you to email me. My contact information is at the end, and set up a time to discuss your project, your needs, and possible solutions using these tools. 
Adobe Acrobat is a clunky way to edit OER, but it makes sense when you can find a PDF file and do not want to pay for an editing software or to convert your file into a Word or Google Doc for something simpler. It has a lot of the functions you'll need to edit, but it can be really off when it attempts to recognize text boxes, so trade-offs must be considered. This is what I used when editing the recently published Interpersonal Communication OER Adaptation for Toro's Speech and Communication Department, and it was pretty difficult, so I don't recommend it for beginners, but please email me if you'd like to know more about how the project went. Pressbooks is a kind of all-in-one OER platform where you can edit and publish an OER, but for this reason, as well as the support you receive when using it, it does have a cost associated with it. If you can secure funding for it, Pressbooks is one of the most popular and user-friendly OER platforms out there. LibreText is not quite as well developed as Pressbooks, nor does it come with as much support, but it is a particularly good platform for science OER and it is free to use. If you can get the hang of it, it's a great tool. Microsoft Word and Google Docs are some of the lowest tech options you can find and some of the cheapest too. You would use these as you would with any other document and then you would convert it to the file format you wanted afterwards. So like a PDF, for example. And now on to where you can publish your work. Toro faculty, staff, and students can share any scholarly work they have created while they were affiliated with Toro via Toro Scholar, our open access institutional repository. We chose this route for the interpersonal communication book I mentioned earlier, because Toro is already paying for the subscription, so there is no additional cost, and we have a lot of control over the display and upload. LibGuides, or the library's research guides, are a really popular way to share existing OER with students because they're visually appealing and easy to create, though the library does have to be the administrator on these pages. Besides sharing an OER you are using the way it is, LibGuides is also an easy way to put together pieces of OER. You can load files or links right into Canvas, our learning management system, if you're using that for your courses. Like LibGuides, this approach works best when you are splicing together existing OER files, not editing or making revisions. And you can share your adapted OER via WordPress if you have it all as a PDF or another easy to download file format. Here's an example of a math textbook that used WordPress. It's free, but there are a lot of accessibility uh, concerns that the user needs to take into consideration, so keep that in mind. Once you've adapted an OER, it is critical to keep it current, and the best way to do that is to assess and get feedback. You'll want to create a plan for how you will gather feedback and when. You might share out surveys specific to the resource, ask questions on midterms or final exams, or pose a question in the course evaluation, among other possible approaches. As for when you might make the changes, you can plan to work on them between semesters or as you go through the semester, depending on how much time and energy you have. Finally, you'll want to plan out how the OER will be maintained if or when the steward of the OER leaves the institution. This might be your supervisor or department chair or no plan at all. If you do not plan to maintain it, craft a note you can leave with the resource online. And that's it for this quick overview into the world of adapting OER. Each of these tools has their own rules and quirks to the way they work. So here's my contact information if you have any questions or would like to learn more about adapting an OER. Thanks for watching.